Welcome to another episode of The U. My name is Robert Whitaker. Today, I'm gonna take you through a step-by-step -step demo and I'm gonna show you how to use the git diff command. We're gonna do this in four simple steps. Step number one, we're gonna create a brand new file and commit that file to Git's local repository. In step number two, we're then gonna create a newer version of that same file. And then in step number three, we're going to use the git diff command to compare the newer version of the file to the older version of the file. And finally, in step four, I'm gonna show you some different scenarios that you can use the git diff command in. All right, let's get started. So this is the command we're gonna cover right here, git diff. The reason why you're going to use a command like this is to compare two versions of the same file. In this example, I'm comparing a newer version of the days file with an older version of that same days file. Now, looking at the output of the get diff command can be overwhelming. And if we look down here, we see all this text, we see these numbers, we see these plus signs, we see minus signs, we see uh, stuff in red text, stuff in green text. So what I wanna do is demystify this for you. I wanna teach you how to read this output. So my git repository is set up inside of my files folder. One important concept is I'm gonna refer to this files directory as my git project folder. Um, also, if I run the git status command, notice here I'm in the main branch. No commits have happened. So now that we covered my setup, we're now gonna move on to our four steps. Uh, it's important to note that steps one and two, we are just going to be setting things up and I'm going to cover some important concepts first. And then later in steps three and four, that's when we're actually going to use the git diff command. But let's go ahead and start step one. We're gonna create a new file and commit the file to our git local repository. So if we are back in the lab here, I'm gonna type the code command and I'm going to type the file that we're gonna create, musicians. And now that the file was created, I wanna now add data to the file. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out my five favorite musicians. There we go, we got Rick Astley, Adele, George Michael, Paul McCartney, and Madonna. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control S I just saved the file. Let's confirm that we see the file in our files directory. There we go, there's the musicians file. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the musicians file to the staging area. I'm going to use the git add command and I'm going to specify the file that I wanna add to my git staging area. After I stage the file, the next command I want to run is the git commit command. And I'm gonna specify a message with this commit. So notice here, I'm gonna say, I just add musicians file to project. We're going to go ahead and hit enter to create a commit. Ah, I messed that up. Oh, you know what? It's not supposed to be single quotes. It's supposed to be double quotes. That always throws me off. Let's try it one more, one more time here. All right, there we go. I just created a commit. Now, if you're newer to Git, you might not know what a commit is, and that's okay. A commit is like a snapshot or a backup of your files and folders within your project folder at a specific point in time. And when I commit the files, those files will get stored in something called the Git local repository. And you can think of the Git local repository as kind of like a database. So we just created our first version of this file. Let's now move on to step two, where we're gonna create a newer version of our musicians file. So let's say I decided I no longer like George Michael in line three here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete George. And let's say I decide to replace George with Lady Gaga. Let's go ahead and save the file. So I'm gonna hit Control S. Now let's take a look at this image so we can see what's currently happening in our setup. Our musician file in its current state, it has Lady Gaga inside of it on line three. It's being stored in our working directory. In Git, the term working directory, which can also be referred to as a workspace, it's defined as the way you currently see your files and folders, in your pro project folder. Remember, our project folder is our files directory. Now I'm gonna switch back to the lab. I wanna show you 
what the working directory, also known as the workspace, is. And guys, it's, it's really, really simple. Don't overthink the working directory. Remember, the working directory is as I currently see my files and folders. So if I run the dr command, I'm seeing my file in its current state that it's in my working directory. If I close and reopen the file, the file that opens up, I'm opening the file from my working directory. Again, very simple. All the working directory is, is how I currently see my files and folders within my project folder, within my files directory. That's it. So just because the musician's file has been updated and saved into my working directory doesn't mean the newly updated file is stored or archived in my Git local repository. Now, maybe I do wanna commit or save the latest version of my file to my Git local repository, but maybe I forgot to commit it. And maybe I take a one hour lunch. And when I get back from lunch, I can't remember what I was working on. So maybe we go back into our lab and we decide to run the git status command. And notice we can see the musician's file has been modified. So what that previous git status output is telling me is the musician's file that is currently in my working directory has been modified. So I know the file has been changed, but maybe I don't remember what I actually changed inside the file. Now, wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to compare my recent version of the musician's file to my older version of my musician's file? And this is where the get diff command comes into play. So now that we created a second version of the musician's file in step two, let's go ahead and move on to step three. And we're going to use the get diff command to compare the two different versions of our file. Uh, let's go ahead and run the get diff command. Now notice here, when I'm running the command, I'm just specifying get diff. And because I'm not adding additional options to the get diff command, I'm running the command in default mode. And if you run the get default get diff command, Git will compare the files in your working directory to the files in your last commit. So let's go ahead and run the get diff command. And here we go, we get a bunch of output. So let's break down this output. So this top part of the output of the command looks like these first five lines right here. I like to kind of consider this as like the legend of the output of the command or it's the guide of the output of the command. That top part of the command enables us to decipher this the rest of this output below here. All right, so let's first focus on the top part of the command, the legend part of the command. And this part of the output here, all they're saying is we are comparing the older version of the musician's file with the newer version of the musician's file. The older version of the musician file has minus signs. The newer version of the file has plus signs. They're going to use later on in the output of this command, they're going to use those minus signs and plus signs to signify what are in the two different musicians files. And then notice right here, we have references to numbers one and five. What do the, this mean? So right here, I have a minus sign. And what this is showing me is for the older file. In the output below, we are gonna display starting at line one, and we are gonna display a total of five lines. Right here, we have a plus sign. They're saying for the newer musicians file, we're also starting off at line one, and we're also gonna be displaying a total of five lines in the newer musician file. So now that we can read and decipher the top part of this command, now we can understand what the bottom part the bottom half of this command means. The bottom half of the get diff command displays the data that resides in both the older and in the newer musicians file. What we're actually looking at is lines one through five in both versions of the file. And notice there are several lines that we're looking at that do not have a plus sign or a minus sign and are not color coded. The lines that do not have a plus or minus sign and are not color coded reside in both the older and the newer musicians file. So in my example, that's gonna be line one, Rick Astley, line two, Adele, line four, Paul, McCart Paul McCartney, and line five, Madonna. All those names 
are in both versions of my musicians file. But notice here, line three is different. The older version of my file, notice the minus sign and red color, it contained George Michael in line three. However, in the newer version of my musicians file, notice it's in green and has a plus sign. I can see I replaced George Michael with Lady Gaga. Sorry, George. All right, awesome. So remember, I'm back from lunch. I forgot what changes I made to the file in my working directory. Now that I ran this git diff command, I can be certain about the changes I made to the musicians file. So now I can go ahead and stage and commit the file to my git local repo. So let's go ahead and stage the file. And we're gonna go ahead and commit the musicians file. I'm gonna update my message. So I'm gonna replace George with Lady Gaga is my message. Let's hit enter. Bam, we just created another commit in our git local repository, which is again, like our database. So we should have two commits now in our git local repository. And I could, I can confirm that we can see both of those commits by running this command right here, git log one line. And we can see there are, there's one commit, it has a commit ID. And here is our second commit, our newer commit. And it also has a unique commit ID. Now this image depicts our current setup. These two dots right here represent our two commits in our get local repository. The first commit on the left here, that commit has my original version of my musician's file with George Michael in line three. But in my second commit, that has the second version of my musician's file and that has Lady Gaga in line three instead. Now, remember, we still have that concept of my working directory and the working directory is how I currently see my files and folders within my project folder within under the files directory. If I looked at the musicians file inside of my working directory, line three is still going to show Lady Gaga. Now remember what I said before, by default, when you run the git diff command with no additional options, git is gonna show you the differences between the files in your working directory versus the files in your last commit. That would be our second commit right here. So if I run the get diff command, the default one, in this current setup, what do you think might happen? What do you think the output might show? Let's go ahead and check it out. And let's go ahead and run get diff and we get nothing. Now, why are we getting no output? The reason the output of the get diff command is empty is the musicians file in our working directory and the musicians file in my last commit, they're identical. Line three in my musicians file, my second commit contains Lady Gaga. Well, so does the latest version of the file in my working directory. All right, now that we saw how to use the default version of the get diff command, let's go ahead and move to step four and let's cover some different scenarios that you can use the get diff command in. Now, what if I wanted to compare our musicians file in the working directory to the musician's file, not in the second commit, but I wanna compare it to the file in the first commit. I'm going to have to change how I run the get diff command to achieve this. So let's go through an example. So what I need to do is when I run the get diff command, I'm gonna to need to specify the commit ID of our first commit. So the first thing I need to do is run that get uh, log one line command to obtain the commit ID of my first commit. Uh, notice here I have two commits. This is my first commit ID when I had George Michael in line three. And what I wanna do next is I wanna use the get diff command and I wanna compare the old version of my musician's file. Its ID is 24DBC22. I wanna compare that to the version of my musician's file in my working directory. What I do for the file in the working directory is I specify a dot, I specify a period. This period represents my current working directory. Notice when I run the command, I can see George Michael was removed from line three and Lady Gaga is added. So if we go back to this image right here, we just use the get diff command to compare the musician's file in our working directory to the musician's file in our first commit. We can also use the get diff command in different scenarios. So maybe we don't wanna compare the file in the working directory. Maybe we wanna compare the musician's file between two different commits. Well, what I'm gonna to need to do to run the get diff command appropriately is I'm going to need to obtain the commit ID of these two commits. 
I'm gonna rerun the get log one line command. Okay, and now we have the two commit IDs. This is the old commit, first commit. This is the newer commit, the second commit ID. To run a differential between those two commits, I'm gonna do get diff. This is the first commit ID, and then I'm gonna specify the newer commit ID, 5C17943. All right, there we go. And we can see George Michael was removed in line three. Lady Gaga replaced George Michael in line three in the newer version of the musician's file in our second commit. And there are a lot of other scenarios you can use the get diff command in. I'm not gonna cover all those different scenarios in this video, but if you wanted to get some hands-on experience with the get diff command, and you wanted to use the command in several different scenarios, I actually created a get diff tutorial at Cisco University that you can go through. So if you're interested in going through the tutorial, you can go to u.cisco.com, you'll log in. Uh, once you log in, you can go to this search area over here and search for the tutorial name, understanding get diff, hit enter. Notice on the left-hand side of the screen, we can select the content type. So I'm gonna go ahead and select tutorial. And there we go, there is the understanding the get diff command tutorial. This is something that you can actually go through to apply the skills that you've learned in this video. So let's click on it. Here we are at the main overview page. And what this will show you is what you need before you, you can actually go through the tutorial. Uh, you'll need to install Git and you'll need some kind of text editor. Once you do that, then you can go through the steps and get hands-on experience with the git diff command. So I guide you through step-by-step. Step. Some of these examples are gonna look familiar, but I also cover different examples and I cover some different scenarios and different git diff concepts. So this is a great opportunity to apply the skills you learned, but also a great opportunity to learn a few new things as well. All right, that's all I got everyone. I hope this was useful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you so much. <music>